In a new interview with Bloomberg at the Asia Summit, Ray Dalio didn't hold back and he said that he's being very cautious at the moment and that he's now sounding the alarm about what he thinks is actually coming. His biggest concern is that the national debt is being swept under the rug while the government is quietly using inflation to chip away at it. But that's not all. He warns that the November election is at a tipping point for some massive issues like taxes and the growing power of the federal government. And on top of that, Dalio also spoke about China and the brewing issues that is happening over there. To begin with, looking at the debt concerns, Ray Dalio explains that the issue is only going to get worse regardless of who is actually elected. Right now, the United States national debt has just surpassed $35.2 trillion and is rising at an alarming rate of roughly $1 trillion every 100 days. The current debt to GDP ratio is the highest it's ever been, which means that compared to the nation's economic output, the debt is at all-time highs. Generally, a higher debt to GDP ratio signals that the government may face greater challenges in actually repaying down that debt. And here's what Ray Dalio had to say about it. We have an enormous amount of debt, and it's going to keep increasing. And one man's debts are another man's liabilities. Okay, so what is that going to mean for monetary policy? Okay, as you have to sell more and more of those bonds, what will be done? I think the same thing was done in Japan. Though that what happens is there's not going to be a default. Of course there won't be a default. But increasingly they have to drive down real interest rates so that real interest rates are significantly negative. So you're going to have, a ne in order to service the debt, you have to have a significantly negative real rate and you also have to have then the depreciation of the value of money because inflation rises. So that you have to have a nominal growth rate, in other words inflation pro plus real growth, that is above the nominal interest rate and you have to have a real interest rate that is negative and you have to have a positive slow yield curve so that holding bonds is a bad deal. Ray Dalio said in order for the governments to have to repay this debt, they're going to need to drive down the real interest rate so that making these repayments isn't as expensive and at the same time, they're also going to need to make sure that they rely on the, the, the depreciation of the actual money. The reason the dollar depreciation helps is because when the US dollar depreciation appreciates the government benefits from you know being able to pay off the debt with money that's worth less than it once was when it was borrowed think of it like borrowing a hundred dollars from a friend but over time inflation happens and now that one hundred dollars doesn't buy as much as it used to and you still owe that one hundred dollars but it's now easier to pay back because the dollars you're using have less value for the government this means they can collect more in taxes because prices and wages rise and they can pay off the debt that's now cheaper than in real terms the reason reason this works is because as we know over time inflation erodes the buying power of what you can actually buy meaning what you can buy today with $100 is much less than what you could have bought you know 100 years ago. For example $100 in the 1960s is worth around $1,000 today. The average price to buy a home in the 60s was around $11,000 and you could fill up your car for $5 a tank. Moving on to the next point he went through, he spoke about the issues in China and he said the troubles are only just the beginning. Over the years, Ray Dalio has been one of the biggest bulls on China and he hasn't given up on them, but as Dalio said this week, there are real issues with China, especially the $17 trillion economy amid a deepening slowdown. This is what he had to say about it. Individuals, 70% of their money was in real estate. Real estate has gone down. Stocks have gone down. S salaries have gone down. And so, and, and as a result, they're not spending and they're concerned and they're holding money in cash. With deflation, cash is a relatively good asset class. That's kind of the household and the business sector is in that state. At the same time, you have the government sector is a problem because most of the government spending, 83% of government spending, is spent by local governments. Those local governments got their money by selling land for real estate. Okay, there are no land sales. And they borrowed a lot of money. And uh, for those that they borrowed the money don't get paid. And so the question is, how are you going to get money into the those places to operate. It needs a restructuring in order to be able to do that. And then there's also the question, is it respected? And um, it, Deng Xiaoping during his period said it's glorious to be rich. 
Is it still glorious to be rich? So you have an environment in China which is changing and becoming a more difficult environment. So it's the time right now that you would see either is there going to be a restructuring and a getting past that. The innovation, yes, there's fantastic innovation. In terms of technology, there's nothing like it other than in the United States. Europe certainly isn't a competitor in that. However, it's very much government directed. Can there still be entrepreneurship and that inventiveness? These are big, big cosmic questions. Overall, China has been experiencing economic difficulties recently due to several different factors, including a slowdown in the consumer spending, a significant downturn in real estate. For instance, the property market has faced crisis with major developers defaulting on debts, leading to reduced construction activity and lowered investor confidence. Additionally, the global economic environment has shifted with waning demand for Chinese exports amid rising inflation in the Western markets. These challenges have resulted in slower growth rates, increased unemployment and rising debt levels putting pressure on the China economy as it you know, seeks to stabilize and recover. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. See you later.